back in with Northwestern Outdoors Radio. I'm John Cruz, and we've got a very special guest for you this week. Her name is Hillary Franz. She is the Commissioner of Public Lands of the Department of Natural Resources for Washington State, and she covers a lot when it comes to the outdoors, everything from wildfires to clam harvest to derelict vessels and outdoor recreation, too. Commissioner Franz, it is great to have you on the air today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Let's start off with what's going on with wildfire prevention. This is a huge issue in the state of Washington, particularly central and eastern Washington. And you have asked the legislature for $63 million that would go towards restoring forest health and giving your agency the resources needed to hit fires fast and keep them small. It's all part of a, well, a wildfire prevention and preparedness fund. How is this faring so far in this legislative session? And I guess the other question is, how would this get paid for? So let me first start. Washington State has a wildfire crisis. Every year we are seeing a significant increase in wildfires. 2018, we saw the most wildfires in Washington State's history with 1,850 wildfires. There was no area of Washington State that wasn't touched. We had 60% of fires east side, 40% on the west side, and we were fighting it for over six plus months of the year. Only 440,000 acres burned that year, and I say only just because it falls far short of what happened in 2015 where a million acres burned. We've had 3.5 million acres burned total in the last 10 years in Washington State. And we spend, on average, $153 million a year fighting fires. So my belief is this path that we're on of increasing wildfires is only going to increase unless we start to get at the root of the problem. One, get more resources and capacity to get on top of those fires quickly, put them out and contain them and protect the land, protect the communities, and protect our firefighters. And two, get at the root of the problem. We have a forest health crisis in Washington State with 2.7 million acres in central and eastern Washington alone that are already dead and dying. Half of that is federal land. The other half is private and state and tribal land. So my belief is we're paying for this regardless. The question is we're going to pay for it to react in the face of smoke and flames at the total of $153 million, which is only 9% to the true impact to our economy and our lands and waters, or let's pay to be proactive, get the resources up front, get on top of the fires quickly, and restore the health of our forests so they're more resilient in the face of fire, which will over time reduce the damage and the cost and protect lives. So let me cut you off here, Commissioner, because uh, we're talking about a $63 million price tag, but this isn't coming from the general fund. You actually have a pretty interesting way to fund this. And I'm wondering, again, how this is faring in the legislative session. So we put together a plan, a 20-year forest health plan and a 10-year wildfire strategic plan that's gotten broad endorsement from local, state, and federal agencies and uh, firefighters. And that plan is only as effective as it has funding to implement it. Otherwise, it's just paper sitting on a shelf. So we, um, every year, go into the legislature and beg for dollars up front. And um, most years, we come back with very little. And the fact is, it is hard for me to be able to protect my communities and our firefighters and say to the public, we're going to change the trajectory of our forests and our wildfires unless I have dedicated revenue. So we have put forward a proposal that would create dedicated revenue every single year for the resources up front for the forest health work and the wildfire protection. To find that dedicated revenue, we looked at insurance on property and casualty, home and auto, that would generate that revenue. The approach is a surcharge on homeowners policy and auto policy, $5 a policy. So if you're a homeowner with one home and two cars, it's $15 a year. It would generate $62.5 million that would go towards file fire protection resources, air assets, the equipment, drive funding into the local fire districts who are often front and first on the line, and also get significant work happening on our forest to remove the dead disease trees and get the smaller diameter trees out and make our forests resilient to fire, which they naturally should be. I am not a tax and spend person by any means, but I live in wildfire country in central Washington. And if you're asking me to pay $15 to go ahead and fund something like this that could really reduce the risk, I'm all for it. Getting back to the governor, getting back to the legislature, how is this being received? We are on the tail end of the session. 
It's a short session. As you know, it's a short and fast and furious session. It's also an election year where a lot of people, a lot of our legislators are very much focused on the election that's coming up as well as the context of very little time. We were very hopeful this year, even with those circumstances of being able to move this bill. Unfortunately, we were not able to get it out of the House appropriations and get the votes to even get it to the floor of the House or the Senate. So it has died for this year. We will be getting ready for next year. We're going to keep coming back. As you know, these kinds of things uh, take sometimes many years to raise the profile of the urgency and the need. I continue to say to the legislature, you're already paying for this. This isn't a question of do you pay for this or do you pay for education or mental health or transportation? You're already paying for it. You're paying for it in the context of $153 million a year out of your budget all the time, every single year. Let's pay for it up front. We can keep the cost down. We can keep the damage down. And most importantly, we can truly save lives. Did you get any increase at all this year in terms of your budget? And if so, what area was it in? We did not get an increase in our budget this year. We are not completely giving up hope. There was a pretty substantial floor debate last week on the issue of forest health and wildfire protection resources and the need for it. A hearing from both sides of the House how critical it was. There may be a chance for us to be able to get additional money in the legislature this year, though I think we're running out of time. And my belief as much of the budget, even with additional revenue that's come in due to a number of factors, we are holding out hope, but our hope, we believe, is extremely slim. I'll tell you what, I am disappointed, and some of you as listeners may be too. If you are, you should probably contact your legislative members in the Senate and the State House and let them know what your feelings are about funding the Department of Natural Resources, whether you support it or don't support it, especially when it comes to wildfire prevention. Another area where you're sorely underfunded has to do with the removal of derelict vessels. Now, I didn't even know that you had this program, but the Department of Natural Resources gets a whole $200,000 every two years to remove derelict vessels. And this has become a real issue on the Snohomish River near Everett. There was a high-profile situation on Lake Washington in the Seattle area where there was essentially a homeless camp. People were living on board a boat. It costs a lot of money, and the bill's being sent to you. We have throughout all of our waterways, from the coast, the Puget Sound, rivers and lakes, a derelict vessel challenge. Derelict vessels block our navigation channels. They pollute our waters with chemicals. They rip up tidelands, riverbeds, destroy vital habitat that our salmon and orcas depend on, as well as actually interfere with the recreation opportunities that our waterways provide to our public. Removing these boats is extremely costly and extremely difficult, and Oftentimes, we will see a vessel in the water that is easy for us to be able to extract because it hasn't begun sinking to a depth that gets harder and harder the farther it goes and sinks. And unfortunately, the amount of money we have to fund removal of those boats is not keeping up at all with the number of boats we have. Um, I have a boat. We was in our waterways when I first came into this office in 2017. The boat, uh, ironically, is called the Hero. It was going to cost about a million dollars in 2017 for us to remove that one boat alone. Wow. And we have not had the resources to do it. And so at this point, it's now past $2.5 million and rising to $3 million for its removal. And I have a number of those. So we believe we must have, won the resources and the ability to get on top of these boats quickly, get them out before they start sinking to deeper depths and rising the cost of removal and rising the damage that they cause. So we put forward a Senate Bill 6528 that would enable us to uh, remove the cap on the amount we can spend on removing these boats. It lets us help more boat owners also get rid of their problem boats before they become a problem. So it has a voluntary turn-in program. It helps local jurisdictions like the city of Hoquiam and the county of Grace Harbor and other in Snohomish react to boats like this quicker since oftentimes they're the eyes and ears on the ground so that they can get them out at a less cost and with less damage. In addition, it funds a program to recycle these old boats so they don't just end up in our landfills. We have a facility that we helped open up in the port of Ilwaco. Uh, we'll take the derelict vessels, take them apart, part by part, 
puts them up on the internet for people to purchase them as they try to go and put their boats back together or remodel or renovate their boats. We see this as not only helping this environmental challenge, but also creating jobs in one of our poor rural communities. In fact, in that facility, it'll, it'll create 25 jobs when it opens up this year. Well, I, I love the enthusiasm and I love the concept, but getting back to our wonderful state legislature again, did it progress very far in the Senate or not? So this right now, I was up till about 11 uh, p.m. last night sending messages out to a number of our key legislators, both in the House and the Senate, to be able to get this out and to be voted on uh, in the budget in both the House and the Senate. So we are still hopeful this could move. We are urging people to please reach out to their legislators and encourage support from the legislature on this because there is still hope this could get across the finish line. Folks, again, we've been talking to Commissioner Hillary Fran. She's in charge of the Washington Department of Natural Resources. Hillary, would you mind sticking around for the next segment so we can talk about gooey ducks and outdoor recreation? Absolutely. We came home from work the other day, and there were these fire engines everywhere. At first, I thought our house had burned down. We were doing some outdoor burning over the weekend. Well, turns out we didn't completely put out our burn pile. Yeah, and somehow the fire had rekindled and burned up the neighbor's field and his shed. And now we have to pay for the damage and suppression costs. (sighs) Don't make our mistake. Do you burn outdoors? Follow the rules. Call 1-800-323-BURN to find out how. This message is brought to you by the Department of Natural Resources and this station. Welcome back to Northwestern Outdoors Radio. I'm John Cruz. We're back with Commissioner Hillary Fran. She is in charge of the Washington Department of Natural Resources. Earlier on the show, you heard her talk about wildfire prevention and her efforts to go ahead and move the needle in terms of getting funding so that we can get a handle on the wildfire crisis in Washington State. She also talked about the challenges they have in dealing with derelict vessels throughout the state of Washington that are polluting and damaging habitat in our waterways. Now I'd like to talk about some fun things. Well, actually one's fun and one's just a head scratcher to me. So we're going to start off with the head scratcher, gooey ducks. Gooey duck clams if, if for folks that don't know, are huge clams. They average two pounds each. They're associated with Puget Sound, and there's a huge demand for them in China where the average clam can fetch $100 on the open market. However, I understand the business of gooey duck harvesting and selling is caught up in a political trade war, and somehow or another, your agency is involved. Welcome back to the show, and tell our listeners about gooey ducks. Yeah, so gooey duck is one of these amazing native species that Washington State is lucky to have and is actually one of the only states in the United States that actually produces naturally wild gooey duck. Um, We have gooey ducks that are over 300 years old. um, And because the Department of Natural Resources oversees 2.6 million acres of aquatic bedlands, we have the great fortune of managing our gooey duck native species. And what we do is we go and we'll lease out areas, auction off areas for gooey duck harvesters to go in and harvest gooey duck and then sell on the market. Usually we have been making about $20 million annually from sustainable gooey duck harvest. We return these funds to the Puget Sound through salmon habitat restoration and public access to our waterways, uh, which helps promote recreation for our public out on our beautiful waters. Unfortunately, our gooey duck production and markets have been harmed in two ways. Uh, First, uh, they got caught up in President Trump's trade war with China um, because China is 90% of our market. Gooey ducks are China's number one aphrodisiac. Really? And uh, so that's why they <laughs> fetch such a great price. Yes, they are. We are blessed and fortunate to have this unbelievable native species and uh, for China to love it so much and uh, believe in it. Wow. The things you learn as an outdoors radio host. I had no idea that the gooey duck was an aphrodisiac, and that's why it was worth so much in China. That's right. We are not only feeding people, but we are making love happen (laughs) uh, all over the world. And... (laughs) 
<laughs> so the challenge, though, is with the trade wars, it's put our work and our revenue for, that we generate from gooey ducks at harm. In, in addition, you should know that it is a pretty significant part of Washington State's economy, our shellfish and gooey duck, and it's threatening and impacting our rural communities, the jobs and uh, families that depend on that economy. The 35% tariffs on the import of gooey ducks um, invoked by China during the trade war with the U.S. had a large impact on the gooey duck market. The tariffs associated with ongoing trade war with China significantly reduced the per pound value for gooey duck from over $10 per pound to under $6. Wow. And since the tariffs were imposed, we've seen the average price of our gooey duck auctions fall 50%. This is unprecedented for us. And again, what this does is it limits the amount of revenue we're able to generate that then goes into a fund that goes to salmon habitat restoration work and to public access for our waterways. So we're talking and, potentially yeah. like a $10 million hole just because of the trade war. That's exactly right. And now, unfortunately, it's gotten even worse. Go uh, the coronavirus, as we all are becoming more and more aware, has now dealt another blow. Um, gooey duck harvest has literally ground to a halt. Usually we'd be going out for auctions that we would be then uh, generating revenue from, and they have completely come to a stop. The projected annual revenue from gooey duck has now plummeted to ten dollars or ten million, which is optimistic at best. That's a fifty percent be- decrease. Is this because of basically quarantines and the impact not here, but in China that's kind of bringing their economy to a standstill? That's right. I mean, the fact is is their economies come to a standstill. They're not purchasing products, and we are not able to easily export those products either because uh, the market is not there, and also there's a shutting down of everything right now in China. You know, I just learned more about gooey ducks and economics involving gooey ducks I've ever known in my life, so thank you for that, Hillary. Let's next touch on something else. You've got a lot of land as the commissioner of public lands for folks to recreate on. As a matter of fact, you've got 160 recreation sites. There's 80 campgrounds offering free camping. You got 1,200 miles of trails for hikers and other people to use. And you got 30 sites near lakes, and a lot of those lakes have got some fishing. Tell our listeners more about an agency and some public lands that really fly under the radar for a lot of folks. Yeah, so as the Commissioner of Lands, I oversee the Department of Natural Resources, which manages 3 million acres of upland, 2 million acres of forest land, a million acres of agricultural land. We're actually the largest wheat producer. We're becoming one of the largest vineyard producers. And in addition to that, I also oversee that 2.6 million acres of aquatic lands. We are a big believer in multiple uses on those lands. So not only do we generate money for about $325 million for our schools and counties, K-12, through university, and then basic health, housing, and human services for counties, and we're in all 39 counties of the state. We generate revenue from those lands, whether it's timber, or agriculture, or commercial industrial, but we also believe there's opportunities for multiple benefits, and especially recreation. As we know, this is one of our most significant economic industries in Washington State. It's also an opportunity for people to get outside and help them become more physically, mentally, and emotionally healthy. We are blessed in Washington State to have some of the most beautiful landscapes in the world, frankly. And so we are big promoters of that because we have the opportunity on over six, almost 6 million acres of land to get people out and recreate and connect them to the outdoors. We have been working to break down barriers for getting people outside. But in addition to that, we've actually been working to develop more significant regional recreation planning, like the Baker to Bellingham up there in the Whatcom area, where we've created a recreation plan that connects Bellingham all the way to Mount Baker uh, with everything from cross-country skiing to mountain bike, horseback riding, ATV, ORV, hiking, and eventually maybe scuba diving, <laughs> as well as there's kayaking and, and paddle boarding. So you name it, we're trying to offer it. Um, we got to get more people outdoors so they will be connected to nature and the importance of protecting these beautiful spaces that once lost, you can never get them back again. 
We are unfortunately out of time, but folks, I would encourage you to go to the Washington Department of Natural Resources website. When you get there, look for the outdoor recreation page. You're going to be amazed at what you're going to find there and make it a point this spring, summer, and fall to check out some of the wonderful places that our Department of Natural Resources manages. All you need to recreate on them is a Discover Pass. Camping is absolutely free, and I think you're going to really enjoy what you find there. Hillary, thank you so much for sharing all of this with us today on Northwestern Outdoors Radio. Thank you so much. You have a great day. I appreciate the opportunity.